Good morning. Good to see you all on the last Sunday of the year. I'd like to welcome you all who are here joining us and those online. I'd like to welcome you all to New Life. Um, we're starting off today with uh, Psalm 18, verses 1 through 6. I love you, Lord. You are my strength. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my savior. My God is my rock in whom I find protection. He is my shield, the power that saves me, and my place of safety. I called on the Lord who is worthy of praise, and he saved me from my enemies. The ropes of death entangled me. Floods of destruction swept over me. The grave wrapped its ropes around me. Death laid a trap in my path. But in my distress, I cried out to the Lord. Yes, I prayed to, to my God for help. He heard me from his sanctuary. My cry to him reached his ears. As we go into this new year and as we end this, this year, um, we need to cry out to him for, in worship. He is our rock. He's our strength, our, for, our fortress, and our savior. And really doesn't matter how many things get thrown at us as this past year did, no matter how many viruses come at us, no matter how many viruses evolve, he's our, he's our salvation, he is our strength, he is our fortress, he is our shield. And there's no better place to be in the day after Christmas, after we celebrated the birth of Jesus. And I'm glad we're all here today because this is the place where we cry out to him. This is the moment we worship him and we can find safety and salvation in him. So, dear Lord, I thank you for this amazing day that you've created for us, this last Sunday of the year. I pray that we can all lift our voices, we can all raise our hands and worship you. I pray, Lord, protection over our families in this, in this coming year as you've protected us up to this day, Lord. I thank you for every heart that is here in this moment. I pray that you allow us to fill our hearts with your presence, Lord, in this moment of worship. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Sin and darkness, whose love is binding, and so much stronger. I see you, Lord. 
who was and is and is to come. With all creation I sing praise to the King of Peace. You are my everything and I will adore you. Church, let's lift our hands before the Lord today. Father, we worship you on this last Sunday of 2021. We worship you. We give you praise. Today, we set a precedence for how we are leaving this year and going into the next by lifting high the name of Jesus, the name that is above every name. Father God, I just thank you, Lord, for your goodness in our life. I thank you, Lord, for your mercy that is new every day. I thank you for your presence that is mighty in this house today. I thank you, Lord, that you are on the move. And so we choose to move with you today. Father, I thank you, Lord. As we watch into 2022, we watch for the new, but we rejoice in this year. We give you honor. We give you glory. We give you all the praise. We say, welcome, Holy Spirit. Move mightily in this house today. Change someone's heart change someone's mind, heal someone's body today in the mighty name of Jesus, because we're lifting high the name of Jesus. And as we lift high the name of Jesus, everything that doesn't belong has to go. Lives are made new. All things are changed. All things are rearranged for your glory. So Father, we lift you up today. We thank you for your glory in this house today. We thank you for crowning this year with your goodness. And even the tough places are dripping. Oh, I see them. They're dripping with abundance in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, that those places that didn't look like things were right, God's turning them around today in Jesus' name. This week is a week you decree and declare, oh, Lord, you crown this year with your goodness, with your advantage on my life. And even those tough places, oh, I can't even remember those no more because they drip with your abundance in my life. So we just taste and we see that you are good today, Lord, and we just give you honor, we give you praise, we give you all the glory (laughs) in the mighty name of Jesus. I can sense his presence mighty in this house today. So right now we just reach out and we take what we've come believing God for today. If you haven't seen something change, you need to change in 2021. Something you've been believing God for, you just need to reach out and say, I take it today. I take it right now in the name of Jesus. Doesn't matter how long I've been waiting for it. I choose to take it today in the name of Jesus. It doesn't matter what what the holdback has ever looked like. I take my freedom today in the name of Jesus. Because after all, he makes all things new and he is crowning my year with his advantage. In Jesus' mighty name. 
And even those tough places, they are dripping with his abundance. Amen? Well, if you believe that, shout amen. Glory to God. We just give you praise today, Lord. We thank you for the mighty things, the revelations from heaven taking place right here, right now, and for our friends online in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's get out of our seat and greet someone. Good to see you all today. Happy day after Christmas to you all. Thank you for joining us. Well, praise the Lord. Well, we're so, let's look at all these glasses I've got up here. I can see today. Hallelujah. Hand off a few. <laughs> yeah. Get new vision today. Praise God. Thank you all for being here today, the day after Christmas. I know uh, it's, everybody had an exciting weekend. And uh, we're ready to move on. This is the last week of 2021. It's been quite a ride this year. Amen? Yeah. So we're, uh, we're going to finish strong, and we're going to prepare for this year that's coming. And uh, we've been preparing. We're not just going to get ready today. But we're going we're gonna to stay ready. We're going to walk in the good things of God. And you've been learning the Word. We're going to talk about that a little bit today on how to stand your ground. And uh, as a Christian, as a believer, it's one thing to go to church. It's another thing to learn how to really uh, take your place as a believer. And today we want to uh, share some things about taking your place as a believer. And having said that, I want you to uh, be able to grasp a hold of how you take your place as a tither and how you take your place as a giver as a sower of seed, and when we, uh, we'll just get into this a little bit, I haven't read this in a bit, but let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 9, in verse, 2 Corinthians 9 and verse 6, but this I say, he which sows sparingly shall reap also sparingly. And he which sows bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Now, those are two uh, irreversible principles. If you sow as a skimper, how many know what that means? That's what you're going to reap. 
If you sow bountifully, you sow a lot, you're going to reap a lot. Again, irreversible. These are irreversible principles of the Word of God. Every man according as he purposes in his heart. This is also, you say, well, I've been giving. Well, did you purpose to do it with joy? Amen. You have to purpose to give great gifts with joy. You have to purpose to give with joy during a pandemic, during layoffs, during some people staying home, uh, being a slacker, and other people going to work and making less money. You can't focus on that. You have to focus on the Lord as your strength. The Lord is your supply. He is your divine source, and you trust him in all things. And because you do, you're going to do it with joy, knowing that he is your reward. And God is able to reward much more than anybody else. And so we thank God for it. Thank God for you enabling us to be a giving church this year, being able to bless people, being able to, to sow into people that need a, a hand up, not a hand out, a hand up. Because we teach people, and it's okay to give people a hand up. Everybody here, in, in some way or another, at some time, has needed a hand up. Yeah. I'll be the first to raise my hand. And I thank God that somebody was listening to the Lord, and they were able to give me that hand up. And so I want you to receive that same word as you're able, those of you watching online, that you're able to give someone a hand up this coming year. The book of Proverbs says, he that gives to the Lord, or he that uh, lends to the poor, gives to the Lord, and he will repay. You give, you give to someone. We'll switch those words around. He that gives to the poor, lends to the Lord, and he will repay. Hallelujah. If you bless somebody, then from what the word of God says, God is obligated. He feels obligated. He feels obligated by his word. The book of Hebrews says it's by two immutable things. When God says something, that becomes his word, and he backs it up with himself. It's impossible for God to lie. So when we give, God will respond in kind. If you're a tither, the scripture says in the book of Malachi, chapter 3, I know verse 10 says he'll open the windows of heaven and, and et cetera, but verse 11, we don't think about that a lot. Verse 11 says, And I will rebuke the devourer for your sake, saith the Lord. Your seed and fruit will not be aborted, but it will bring forth and will come to pass what you intended for it to do, what I intended for it to do. Praise God when our purpose is aligned with God's purpose. He, he's never going to change to align with ours. We stay right in the word and we align ourselves with God and his purposes. Go to work, praise God. So, Father, as everyone comes today to finish out this year as a great giver, they come here today to new life. And those of you watching online, I want to take just a moment to address you. If you've been watching, uh, if you watch our everyday program, our daily encouragement at 930 in the morning, and you watch our Wednesday night, and you watch our Sunday program, and it's been ministering to you, I encourage you to be a giver to be a tither, to be a sower into this ministry. Uh, what feeds you, you give back to it. And so I, and, and if I watch another ministry, if I pay attention and I receive a word from another ministry, I give into that ministry because they fed me, so I sow into that. Now, this is my home church. I tithe here. Tithe in your local church. That's, that's, that's huge. You have, you have to have foundation. Tithe into your foundation. Give into your foundation. That helps you stand. And so I'm encouraging you, if, you don't, if you're in a place that doesn't have a church and you're watching this, then we're your church. If you have a local church, then don't tithe here, tithe there. But you can give and sow into this. And so God loves you and cares about you. So Father, we say blessing all around the world, people that are watching our program, that you will bless them. I pray you will bless those that are in-house. Bless those, Lord, uh, that are a part of this body, 
We give you the praise and we give you the glory now in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, gentlemen. God bless you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. How many hearers do we have today? Amen. It's going to be good. You saw somebody not raise their hand, just tap them and say, get with it. Well, maybe not like that. I mean, I would. But. Let me get them moving up closer to the front. <laughs> good to see you guys. It's been a, been a challenging year, hasn't it? Good year, all at the same time. We've come through 2021, and again, there's, there's been some challenges. Some have experienced loss. Some have experienced gain. Through it all, we, we've learned. Uh, you say, well, Pastor Dave, I learned how to trust the media. No, really? No, no, nobody, nobody did that. You learn how to think for yourself. You learn how to be a, a thinker. You learn how to digest information. You learn how to discern by the Spirit what's true and what's not. If you stay in the Word of God and you hear something come from somebody, now, now hear this, if you stay in the Word and you hear something that comes from somebody and it's false, the Holy Spirit will start ringing a bell on the inside of you and say, lie, not true, false, false information. And you say, Pastor Dave, do you do that all the time? And I, and I tell people this more frequently. I have to stay in the Word, and when I stay in the Word, I'm a pretty smart guy. If I don't stay in the Word, I'm not smart at all. Because then I'm affected by the other stuff I hear. And we... We all know that. Uh, if I can find it here real quick, and that's saying something. Just, just hang in there with me a minute. Okay, we're getting closer. 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 Okay. Uh, how many of you heard about the the president's family's dog that bit people? Okay. His name's Major. That's that's okay. But he bit a Secret Service agent. He bit a visitor. He bit people for eight days in a row. And then. Uh, <coughs> the White House Press Secretary, Jen Psaki, saying the dog was surprised by an unfamiliar person and reacted in a way that resulted in a minor injury. They took a lot of words to say the dog bit somebody. Right. <laughs> and so when you hear, especially news outlets that take a lot of words to say something, that has a, a very few worded true response, go with that. And I want to I get that across to you today because we finished a year being inundated with all sorts of information from all kinds of people, from all kinds of avenues and all kinds of platforms and even churches. And <clears throat> there are some churches that are great some are employed by the other side. All, because the sign says church doesn't mean they're of God. What means they're of God is if they preach the word. If they don't preach the word, they're just a social club. They're just getting together for chicken dinners. They're just getting together for, for fellowship. And uh, I, I was in a church one time. And uh, we rented a church years ago, years and years ago, and I was in a different organization, and they were, uh, they were preparing for a, a, a get-together after the service 
when we were finished with our service, they were coming in for another service. They were bringing in bottles of wine and beer, and I thought, hey, that's going to be a party. They're going to they have a party all right. But I, it's like, to me, in, in church, the building, that doesn't really go together. And so I, I, want to, I don't know why I said all that, but it's free. Uh, but we need to really pay attention in 2022. And the Lord's given me some things to share with you concerning 2022, and, and that'll be next week. But having finished 2021, you should write down some of the things that you learned. Because some of you have experienced some hard lessons. And I, I read a, an article, this has been probably 30 years ago, that says, don't waste your tragedies. Don't waste your battles. Don't waste what you went through. If the enemy tried to destroy you, you can, if nothing else, write it down, he didn't get me. He tried really hard, but he didn't win. He, he laid it on me, but I come out victorious on the other side. You need, to, you need to write some of those things down because the devil uh, won't quit. And the next time he throws up something, you'll have something rise up on the inside of you. The Word of God will be helping you put your testimony together and say, you tried, but you didn't win. And even though my flesh may look like it was failing me, and I might have had some weak moments, and I might have had some struggles, but the one on the inside of me never sleeps nor slumbers. The one on the inside of me is never weak or powerless. The one on the inside of me is always alert and awake to your schemes. The one on the inside of me knows how to get me through everything to the thing that God has promised for me, the thing God has called me to be, and the thing God wants me to be. He knows how to get the job done. And you can say, yes, Mr. Devil, he knows how to use somebody just like me in a mighty way in the day we're living in. Hallelujah. Can somebody say amen? amen. So I, I believe, I've looked at all of this. I've, I've, I've been around it. I've experienced some of it. And I, I've been touched by some of it, just like you have. And, and we're saying, what, what are you saying, Pastor? Are you magnifying our weaknesses? Absolutely not. How many of you know you have some weaknesses? Look at all this bunch of honest people here today. Hallelujah. How many of you have never had a struggle? See, look at all these honest people here today. Those of you watching online, I hope the camera caught all these honest people here today. Because, you know, that's part of life. Jesus chose to come as that baby we talked about. We celebrated yesterday. Jesus came as a human being, not just a baby. He came as a total, total human being. Uh, in Philippians chapter 2, the, the scripture, and that's, that's not where I'm going. You can go there if you want to. Philippians chapter 2 starts about verse 5. <clears throat> said, he made himself of no reputation, took upon himself the form of a servant, made in the likeness of a man, made lower than the angels, and submitted and subjected himself to the death of the cross, that at the sound of his name, how God so honored him by emptying himself of deity. He emptied himself of being God. Go in Genesis chapter 1 where it says, let us make man in our image way before, way before Bethlehem. When the earth was still void and without form, and then God sees all of that and says, let's make man in our image. And God puts together a plan to, to bring salvation to humanity thousands of years before Jesus was born. And he worked out the plan clear up until the time Joseph uh, was espoused or engaged to Mary. And he was of the lineage of David the king. And he comes and Jesus is born in true biblical lineage order. He's born. He's, he comes the right way. He comes lined up with the word of God. And then when he's born, God enters the earth. And the book of Hebrews says, now, because God entered the earth, we have a high priest which can be touched with the feeling of our infirmities. When you go through something, Jesus said, I, I know what you're going through. I, I know what you're feeling. He knows what betrayal feels like. He knows what isolation feels like. The shortest verse in the Bible says, Jesus cried. Another verse says, Jesus was hungry. Jesus knew loneliness. 
Jesus knew all of those things. He knew what it was like to think his prayers were not being heard in the Garden of Gethsemane. My God, let this cup pass from me. Let this cup of suffering, let the, let the pain, let it. His humanity did not want to go there. But the God likeness and the God purpose on the inside of him said, but not my will, but your will be done. I want to tell you that's where power comes in. You want to know, Pastor, Pastor Dave, how do, how do I get power as a Christian? Have you ever totally surrendered to God and said, not my will? There's probably a couple of people in here, your pastor included. There's been times, said, so Lord, I know, I know what I need to do. I know what your word says. I know what I'm supposed to do but I'm going to do this anyway. Is any, anybody else? Don't leave me up here by myself. It's the last Sunday of the year. I don't want to look back and say they left me hanging. You know, it's like you, you've, experienced, you've experienced some of that where you did things. Uh, what was Elvis? One of his most famous songs, I Did It My Way. He's dead. Elvis is dead. Some people still think he's alive, but Elvis has left the building. He's dead. I hope he went to heaven. I think he did. But when people try to do it their way, there's a suffering involved. But when Jesus, he suffered up front that he could rejoice later. I want to get across to you today. If you submit and surrender, if you'll submit and surrender to the Lord, not my will. I know what the word says, not my will. Not my will, but your will be done. God, help me through this, but I'm going to submit and I'm going to surrender. I'm going, to, I'm going to bow my knee to the will of the Father, and you'll watch what God does in your life. Because what happens in, uh, according to Philippians 2, it said, Wherefore God has given him a name above every name, that at the sound of his name, Jesus, every other name in heaven and earth, every other name, the name of sickness, the name of COVID, the name of cancer, the name of loss, the name of death, the name of whatever, the name of divorce, the name of lack, the name of suffering, at the name of Jesus, it has to bow. What does that mean? It has to submit. It has to surrender. It has to give way to the name of Jesus. It has to give way to the name of Jesus. I'm encouraging you today. I want you to, to learn to employ the name of Jesus. Go to John chapter 15, if you would. One of the things the enemy will try to get you to do, and I want to, I want to say this, and I want you to hear my heart, and I want you to hear my heart, not just as your pastor, but as a theologian, and a, as I, I believe somewhat of a Bible scholar. I've read it a few times. I've been around some things. I've been around plenty of ministry and ministers over the last 50 years. We see the world always tells you that, that if you give in to them, that it'll be over pretty quick. You remember the beginning of last year? If everyone will just give in in two weeks, this virus will be contained. Now they're up to the fourth or fifth variant. It will never stop. They'll continue to tell people if we just do this, if we just do this, we'll get it contained. That's the lie of the enemy. Yes. Now, now, I want to switch gears here. I'm not talking about just the virus right now. The enemy will always tell you, go ahead and do this. It'll be okay. You won't feel the effects of it very long. Nothing will really matter. How many of you noticed food prices went up? Didn't stop us from eating, did it? No. Gas prices went up. Didn't stop us from driving. Right. He said, well, Pastor, I, I just hate to go anywhere because gas is so high. I was with some friends, Ron, I believe, and, and uh, Harry and maybe Doug. We were going to a horse sale years ago in Missouri, and we got kind of sidetracked, and the gas gauge was right around empty, and we were looking for a gas station. And we, we see one in a few miles coming up. It's a little place. Nobody wondered what gas cost. <laughs> we, 
we never checked the prices on the sign. We just pulled in and filled her up. You know, it's like it would have been ten dollars a gallon. We'd have been going, "Glory to God, here's some fuel." But I want to tell you, I want to get across to you today. You've got to really, you got to get engaged in this thing because if you don't get engaged in this life, it's going to slide past you, and you'll end up looking back one day saying, "Why didn't I do something? Why didn't I get involved for my family? Why didn't I learn to pray?" Why didn't I learn to be a part of a church body where there's a corporate anointing and people are joined together so their purpose can go forward in God? Why, why didn't I get plugged in and say, well, I, I didn't want to serve? Well, I'm glad you brought that up too. All of you need to learn to serve in this local church in some capacity or another. Amen? You, you should have just looked at somebody and go, Amen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So he's, mm, I know what you mean, Pastor. <clears throat> All right. I've got to quit preaching so I can start preaching. John chapter 15. It's still going to be right on the same track here. How many of you got any leftovers? All right what you're going to be doing the next couple of days. Good to have my brother-in-law, John, here in California. It's got to be like a breath of fresh air. <laughs> yeah. John chapter 15 and verse 4. Jesus said, Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine, no more can you except you abide in the vine. I am the vine and you are the branches. He that abides in me. <clears throat> One translation for the word abide means to prosper. Let's try that just for a moment. He that prospers in me and I in him, we could say when he prospers in us, the same brings forth much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered, and men gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, his words, his words, the Word of God on the inside of you is the closest thing to God you'll ever experience on earth. It's what about His presence? His words are His presence. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. One translation wrote down in the footnotes of my Bible says, ask for anything you want. Hmm. That scares some people. And they try to, they try to, to back off and say, well, I won't ask for much. Don't insult God. Genesis 1-1, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The next verse, and the earth was void and without form until God moved on it. How did God move on it? Read down through the rest of, the, of chapter 1. And God said, let there be light. God said, let there be green grass. God said, let there be birds. Let there be fish. Mm. God said something. God said something. It's important to say something to your trouble. Yeah. It's important to say something to your finance. Mm -hmm. It's important to say something uh, to God about your family. Uh, Lois Toucher from Shekinah Glory was here a few years ago. They told a story about this, this lady uh, that uh, I forget where she lived, but she was alone. She had some adult daughters, and they wanted to uh, kind of help their mom and give her something to do because she was getting bored. They could tell from the phone calls. And so they bought her and had shipped to her a talking bird. 
And so they sent the, you know, the bird was shipped, and she gets the package, and a few days, you know, a week or so goes by, and the daughters call, and, Mom, did you get the gift? She goes, yes. So what did you think about the gift? She said, well, it tasted pretty good. It's kind of skinny, but it, it tasted all right. I go, what? They said, it was a talking bird. And she said, well, it should have said something. So, <laughs> so it's a big deal to say something to your problem. Say something. And that's why uh, people, people try to get folks to not engage and I'm not, I'm not talking a lot of politics today. I'm a preacher. I'm going to stay with what I do best. But don't lay down and roll over in 2022 because 2021 had some rough spots. Learn to say something about your destiny and stay in the Word of God so you'll know what it really means. There's too many people saying, you don't have to study the Bible. Churches aren't essential. Pastors aren't essential. Local churches aren't essential. Uh, I read one thing, a, a news thing the other day, and this church said, well, we're not going to have church. We'll just do virtual. Listen, that's good if you want to learn something. But if you want to get on what God's doing, you get involved in that local church. I mean, you, you drag yourself to church, well, I don't feel good. Go anyway. I don't feel like it. Go anyway. Well, Pastor, I, I don't know. I don't know what good I would be. Show up to show the devil whose side you're on, if nothing else. And learn, learn to do something. Learn to be a part of it. You say, well, I, I don't know. I'm just kind of a loner. Get rid of it. God didn't create people to be alone. So, well, I'm shy. Shyness is a form of sin. It'll keep you back from the will of God and keep you hid out. And God didn't call people to be uh, hermits. He called you to be part of the family of God and to abide in the vine, abide in what Jesus is saying. I want to get to my notes so I can hit some things a little harder. You want me to preach hard to you? I don't, I don't know what's wrong with y'all. I like it, but that's okay. That's good. Uh, you know, in, in the book of Nehemiah, you don't have to turn there. But it talks about where Nehemiah was grieving before a wicked king, and the king saw him grieving, and he was serving the king. He was a captive. He was a slave. And the king said, what's wrong? And he said he didn't even want to tell him because he was afraid of what the king would say. But God had it all set up. And he said, my, my Jerusalem, my people are suffering. They're in slavery. The walls of Jerusalem are broken down, and the enemy can come in and out as they please and just hurt the people, ravage the people, and desecrate the city of our God. And the king saw how good Nehemiah served him. He goes, what do you want from me? What can I do? So he told him, the king supplied all of the lumber, supplied everything to rebuild the wall with, uh, but they had to use the, the bricks of the wall that were burned, the, the stuff in the rubble. And God knows how to use burned out bricks, doesn't he? God knows how to give bricks a second chance. And I'm not saying you're bricks, but God knows how to use people to give them a second chance and to do something really big in their life. But anyway, they, they went, long story short, uh, they, they went to Jerusalem. The king sent, uh, God used a wicked king. He used an unsaved king to help rebuild the walls. And I want to tell you right now, God knows how to use unsaved people to get his will done through people that are willing to serve him. Hallelujah. And so that's, that's a huge thing. You need to pay attention to that and say, well, this politician may not be, may not be a perfect person. I can stand up here and uh, on worldwide uh, streaming right now and say, I don't know of any perfect politicians. I can stand up here and part of New Life Fellowship and say from the pulpit of the back door, I don't know any perfect people in here outside of, the, of what the Word of God says. We're perfect in Him. We're perfected in Jesus. We're perfected through the blood of Jesus. Nothing we did but all that He did. We're just standing in our place, hallelujah, saying because uh, he died, was buried, and raised back to life again on the third day according to the scripture, we stand in our position that Jesus paid the price. Nudge somebody say, Jesus paid it all for you. Jesus paid it all for you. Amen. Jesus paid it all for you. Well, pastor, I just made, made, I messed up the other day. Okay, but Jesus paid it all for you. 
get past what you did the other day and start thinking about what he did 2,000 years ago that's still powerful today. Learn to take that stand. And you'll never be able to take that stand. I can't tell you how God wants you to stand strong unless I know what the Word says about you standing strong. The Scripture says, Ephesians 2, 6, For we're raised up together and made to sit together in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. You say, but Pastor, I still feel, I get aches and pains. Yes, but spiritually and positionally, you're raised up together. It's like this. My, my earthly mother and father have gone to be with the Lord. I'm still their son. That won't ever change. I'll be a legate forever. I'll be a legate in heaven. Amen. You'll be who you are in heaven. If you're born again, oh, the strength of that foundation you stand on. And when you see people come in and say, well, what about this and what about that? You know, we, we're prepared for uh, a few days of a shutdown. I'll say it like that. And you say, well, Pastor, you think you could live off grid for a year? I don't know how we'd fare living shut up in the same room for a year. <laughs> how about you guys? Huh? Yeah. She'd be trying to send me outside. It's like, we can't go out there. But, you know, you, you, you pre- prepare for a few days of something. You know, I got, I got my spam ready and stuff like that, some camel soup, a few, few of those items for a few days. But uh, we're, I'm not going to be making no uh, spam salad or anything. Like, we're talking survival stuff. But, you know, I don't know where I'm going with that. But anyway. <laughs> You get your foundation secure in the Lord. So when the enemy comes and lies to you, like, well, you've got this, you've got that, you learn to resist that. And you say, well, Pastor, all the reports show this is what I've got. It's trespassing. When God called Abraham, he said, I want you to go to this place. It's a great land. There are enemies living there. And I want you to drive out the trespassers. It means to possess the land. The word possess means to drive out the trespassers. Anything tries to come into your home, drive out the trespassers. Anything tries to come into your marriage, drive out the trespassers. Anything tries to come upon your children, you drive out the trespassers. Anything tries to come against your finances, what do you do? You drive out the trespassers. Anything tries to come against your health, what do you do? You drive out the trespassers. We have, we have folks... Uh, over the last year or so, uh, some have contracted COVID. What did they do? They drove out the trespassers. We've had people uh, that, that have had cancer. We drive out the trespassers. We've had people that have had uh, lawsuits. We drive out the trespassers. Praise God. I've been in court uh, numerous times and watched the verdict change before my eyes. But a couple recently in church, I was with them, and, and the lawyer, they take a break, and it's, it's back and forth, you know, and the lawyer takes a break, and we, we got in the hallway, and they asked me to stand with them, and he goes, I, I don't know, he was confused, the lawyer was confused, and almost like he almost had a tear or two in his eye, and he said, I don't know what just happened, but the plaintiff just dropped all the charges. Because the witness they had, and the witness was there, called up to the stand, and and not up to the stand, but they said, are you ready to go and and share your testimony? It was going to be like the nail in the coffin kind of thing. And this lady said, I didn't do that, and I didn't say that. And that's not right. You talk about some excitement in the courtroom. He comes back out and said, it's over. There's no case. Everything's shut down. And they're saying, he goes, I I don't, I've never, I've never, I like it when God does that and he makes people just like, they don't, I I, 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 I,
That's a prelude to speaking in tongues. Get filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Another time I was in court and uh, some family members were squabbling and we just went to back up support for this one individual, and a lady, and her siblings were suing her and the brother got on the stand and they started talking to him and the guy started he just started shaking a little. He's a big guy. His, his voice started breaking. And he looked at the judge and then looked at his sister and he goes, I said, so what? He goes, I, I'm sorry this ever got this far. And I apologize for my part of it. Will you forgive me? Right on the stand in court here in town. And turned around. And everybody's looking like, what, what just took place? I tell you, God just took place. Quit trying to say a lawyer was that smooth. No, no. No, God took place. When, when you're sick and feeling sick, and sick looking like sick is what it is, but something happens, and you start feeling better, and you start getting better. You say, what just happened? God just happened. God just happened. When it looks like there's no money, it looks like there's no money and the check comes in the mail or there's extra money in your account and nobody is saying anything like it came out of anybody else's account, but there's money in your account. What, what just happened? God just happened. God just happened. When it looks like the, the marriage is just falling apart and there's nothing going right and, and this, all of a sudden they look at each other and go, whoo, where did he come from? Wow, she sure is pretty. What just God just happened. God knows how to make ugly things beautiful. God knows how to make bad situations good. God knows how to turn. I want you to get a hold of that as we're leaving 2021 because you're going to need some 2022. It's going to be a good year. It's going, but it's going to be like Canaan. God said, it's a land that flows with milk and honey. Oh, uh, the Lord's given me some things to share out of the Scripture where, where the Scripture says, we have not come this way before, but, but we're going to go into 2022. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. When you talk, I heard Canaan, it's a land of milk and honey. I, I heard that growing up as a kid preached in church. Oh, Canaan. And it was older when I started hearing the other side of it. It's, it's filled with wilderness. And it's filled with desert. And it's filled with wild animals. And it's filled with giants. And it's filled with crazy people. They worship the God. There's like over 70 different gods in Canaan when God told the children of Israel to go in and take the land. Kind of like America. Where they put satanic uh, things of worship next to the cross. Last week, the goat's head with the horn and they put all sorts of satanic stuff out there because there's a satanic church that wants religious exemption and all of these kinds of things. It's like, you know, the devil can play his game, but we don't play along. And so they, they fought that. Seventy different deities. Moloch, one where they sacrificed children in a fire to try to appease the God. That's not our God. Our God says children are like arrows in the quiver of a mighty man, of a mighty warrior. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. See, my children are blessed. Say that right, say that right now with my children are blessed. My children are blessed of the Lord. Hey, hallelujah. Oh, see the anointing start to rise up when we start saying that? Why? Children are important to God. Jesus, bless little children. Unless you become as a little child, you'll no wise enter the kingdom of heaven. And, and it's not talking about heaven. It's entering the kingdom. What about entering the kingdom? Because children are forgivers. Growing up, we'd see, we'd see our kids, they'd, they'd squabble, they'd get into different things and stuff. And, and some of you, you know, I've heard stories over the years. Kids, they'd, they'd get in trouble. One of them, you know, punch one in the eye, and the other one give the other one a bloody nose. And they say, what in the world's going on? Parents get all wired up about it. And the next day, the same kids are out playing again. What do you mean? They're quick to forgive. Adults are quick to remember. Hmm. 
Are we hearing this today? Nehemiah wanted to build that wall. He wanted to build that wall. When he got there, he had to overcome being a slave in in an unsaved king's place. He got there. The materials were there. He started building the wall. What happened? The people that lived there got threatened. Sanballat, Tobiah, Geshem. They were all threatened by the wall being built. And so they came four different times to discourage Nehemiah from building the wall. The discouragement, they made threats. The enemy will threaten your peace. The enemy will threaten your finance. He will threaten your health. Threaten all of these things. When that doesn't work, he'll try to come from a different angle. That's why you need to be filled with the Holy Ghost. That's why you need to be really believing God and praying in tongues. I'm going to say it like this. I've got it wrote down. The Lord began to speak some things to me one morning this past week, real early. Every time you want to say something in response to how you feel or what the enemy would do to you, pray in the Spirit about it instead. Okay. I want to break it down. I'll try to make it simple. Have you ever had thoughts going on in your head of anger and frustration? And the first thing you know, you're talking to yourself out loud. Mm. Mm. And you're not saying, oh, thou son of the blessed most high. Uh Uh-huh. But you're saying things. But here's what, here's the tragedy. When you say things, even quietly, and you're the only one who can hear it. Your brain hears it. And when your brain hears audio, it, it receives it as a command. That's why the book of Proverbs says, A curse without a cause cannot come. Hmm. So, be careful what you pray and when the, when, what you say and because it'll affect what you pray. If you've already, if you've already been confessing the curse, but Lord, I really need help because it's no good. Low down, it's just really messing with me and getting on my nerves. And I know I, I'm just venting. Mm. Oh, I want to ask for a show of hands on how many people vent. <laughs> Call up that one person and just spew. On them. You ever been close to somebody who threw up? I can jump five feet backwards, not even touch the floor. <laughs> you need to be that way when people start saying things around you. If you say things your own self, you need to repent quickly. You need to repent quickly because the devil will work on that. And does that happen to anybody this year? Come on, let's, we're, we're finishing strong. I'm not trying to point out your weaknesses. I'm trying to point out some things to help you stay strong. And when we identify things, so if, if you quit ignoring the curse, the curse just gets stronger. You want to know how to stop the curse? The curse without a cause doesn't come. Actually, Proverbs says, curse without a cause does not come. It's like a bird that leaves a nest, flies around, looks for a place to land, can't find any place to land, so it comes back. That's why some people, they get a victory, and they walk in victory for a few minutes, and they, or a few days, or a few months. They walk in victory for a, a long time, maybe, but after a while, they, they start saying the same thing, and that curse is still out there wandering, and it goes, hey, there's an opening. Here's, and I heard this years ago. Here's how you reserve, reverse the curse. You don't nurse it. How many of you nursed something happened to you years ago? Don't raise your hand. If you do, that'll be another 15 minutes of a message. Don't nurse it. Don't nurse what happened to you. Don't nurse that negative thing. Don't nurse it when somebody got, what well, pastor, they were so wrong, and I was so right. Let it, let it go. Let that go. Let that go, because we're going to create room for God to work here today. All right, let's do some excavating. We're going to create some room for God to work. Don't nurse that curse. 
Don't nurse that time you were slighted. Mm. Is it unusually quiet in here? Yes, okay. Don't nurse that thing. And don't rehearse it. Don't rehearse it. Uh, okay, I'll be real candid with you. Years ago, I sold a horse to uh, an individual, and I, I bought it from uh, a guy. We, we became uh, friends, of no, you know, you know, we're not close friends, but we were uh, pretty good business associates. And so I bought a horse from him and sold this horse to somebody else. And the vet checked it out, all this kind of stuff, blah, blah, blah. And uh, people wanted to know what kind of guarantee I, I gave on the horse. And I go, when you leave the driveway, it's your horse. If his head falls off, after you make the turn, it's yours. If he's dead when you arrive where you're going, it's yours. There, that's all the warranty you get, all the guarantee. And I'm being as honest as I can. And I, and anyway, uh, the the people that bought it, a lady and her son bought it, and and then the the, the husband he. He was messed up on drugs, and he called me up just saying all kinds of ugly things, and boy, just bugged me. And so I mentioned it to my other friend. I bought the horse from him. You ever had this happen? He goes, yeah. He goes, yeah, just here's, here's what you do. And uh, <clears throat> so I did that. But it just kind of kept laying on me. You ever had anything do that? You know, it's like, you, you know, I'll, please help me a little bit here. I'm, I'm trying to help you back. And uh, so... About a month went by, and I, I called him again. I go, hey, John. And I go, and I said, that just still aggravates me. He goes, why are you still talking about that? He was that kind of acquaintance. Like, Ooh. I, said, oh. I, wanted, I wanted to just kind of turn as he slapped me with those words on the phone, you know. And, so he, and he had that kind of influence with me. He had that kind of credibility because he was talking to Ron. I don't know if you were with us that time. We're, we're at John's down in Missouri, and but he he showed us a property that he had just bought. That's nice. It wasn't a house he lived. He just bought another property. He goes, I wrote them a check for nine hundred fifty thousand dollars for that. Yeah. Hmm. My name is Leggett, L E G G E T T. <laughs> you could write it for half that. <laughs> so he had he had clout. He didn't he wasn't flashy. That that was a nicer house what he lived in. He didn't move in that. He just bought it. And he said, You still talking about that? Let me encourage you. When you're tempted to bring up something from the past and and nurse it and rehearse it. Tell yourself or give somebody close to you an in to say, you still talking about that? You haven't you have moved on from that. Cut the anchor loose. Because if you keep uh, rehearsing that, your close friends or family, when they see you, all they'll think about is you're going to rehearse the curse. I believe the Holy Ghost is sharing this. Because we go in 2022, we don't want to be rehearsing every negative thing. Now, there's, I have some memories in the past. That's my testimonies. Uh, I, have good, I have good memories. I have healthy memories. Are there any negative ones? Absolutely. If I concentrate on those, guess which way I'm going? going to give you a quick Bible illustration. Everybody should say amen any time a preacher says a quick illustration. Uh, the children of Israel wandered for how many years in the desert? Forty. How many? Turn to your neighbor and say 40. You know how long a journey it was? Eleven days. But they went the scenic route. Forty years for an eleven-day journey. 
40 years. And finally, they keep walking around one certain mountain, and somebody speaks up and says, how long are we going to keep going around this same mountain? Let the Holy Ghost speak that into you today. If the devil's tried to do something to keep you stuck, you need to say, I'm done going around that mountain. When I cross that bridge, I'm going to blow it up. It's impossible to go back anymore. Hallelujah. I'm not, I'm not crossing that thing that keeps the curse alive in my life anymore. And, and you learn to abide in the vine because Jesus said, Except you abide in me, you can do nothing. If you will abide in me, it goes on to all things are possible to those who believe. And for with God, nothing shall be impossible. And whatsoever you pray in my name, I will ask the Father to give it to you in my name. And when two or three of you are gathered together in my name and agree on one thing, as touching one thing, it shall be done. It shall be done. It, say it shall be done. So I want you to get your confession down when you speak something that you believe. I was on a flight back from Indonesia uh, for a ministry thing, and uh, the only time I've been, the guy I was sitting to was talking to, Dr. Peter Youngren across the aisle, and they were talking about T.L. Osborne. You can look him up on YouTube. He's, he's long deceased. You guys probably remember part of his ministry. Pastor Nett does, maybe some of you. He was a great minister to Africa, won hundreds of thousands of people, great miracles. And Dr. Youngren was talking about him, and he said, I asked his wife, I mentioned this a few weeks ago, I think. He said, I asked his wife, what made T.L. so powerful? And she said, he believed what he said. I want you to get your confession down, your proclamation of faith, your declaration of faith that when you say it, you believe it. That if it happens today, fine. If it doesn't happen till next week, it's fine. If it doesn't happen till next month, it's fine. If it doesn't happen till next year, it's fine. And some confessions will bring in quicker results than others, depending on what you're believing God for. Because some, it's not that God is slow in answering your prayers. It's sometimes we're slow in allowing God place in our life to answer our prayers because if he answered early, we wouldn't be able to handle some things. Is this, anybody getting anything out of this? We're wrapping up 2021. Oh, glory to God. We want to hit 2022 with a pedal to the metal. Well, Pastor, let's just ease into it. I've never eased into too much of anything. But we're going we're gonna to quit nursing that curse. We're going to quit rehearsing. We're going to never say, why me? And that's the way we can reverse it. Remember that place that you stood in, a place of faith, a place of victory, before you started carrying on about it? We're coming back to that place of victory, and you're going to leave that place of victory and go to the next place of victory. You're not going to go from victory to defeat or defeat to defeat. We're going from victory to victory. We're going to the next place and the next place. Some of you are going into homes you're, you're buying a home or building a home. You're going from uh, getting a car or a truck that, that's not held together with duct tape. You get one that, that the motor actually works in. Hallelujah. During, during the Depression and the, uh, the Dust Bowl era, some interesting stuff of our country. Uh, motors would quit working. There would be so much sand in the motors. And people would pull their cars. That's, that's, that's wrong. You're supposed to get in a car and it carry you. But we're going we're gonna to get to the place that, that things are working. You're going to get to you say, but pastor, everybody in our church is not, they're not getting what we're saying. But the ones that get it are going to go. The ones that get it are going to walk in victory. And everybody may not get it at the same time. But don't give up on the ones that don't get it. Be patient with them. It took me a while. It took you a while. And let God do the work in them because we're going to go, we're going from victory to victory. We're going from level to level, and we're going to see God do big things. And I would encourage you. You say, well, Pastor, I've had this thing in my mind. Get some new words in your head. Get in the Word of God. Get this going. Look at what Jesus said. Let me go back to this. 
Use one of my three pairs of glasses here. Verse 8, or verse 7, if you abide in me, that means if you abide in the word, and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified, that you bear much fruit. So shall you be my disciples. So I I want to end it with this. How much fruit are you bearing? Not are you bearing any fruit. How much fruit are you bearing? Scripture says that you bear much fruit. Not just you walk in victory. Well, I'm going to heaven. No, no. Herein is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit. Prayers answered. Bringing somebody else in. Casting a devil out of somebody else. Amen. Walking in a level of victory that's pleasing to God and God sees fruit coming along in your life. Hallelujah to Jesus. Praise God. Is this getting in, getting into anybody today? Hallelujah. Would you stand with me? Praise Jesus. Praise the Lord Jesus. Father, we thank you today. And I want to encourage you all over the house. I'm serious as I can be. You get filled with the Holy Ghost. You pray in the Spirit. You learn, to, you learn to believe God big, and when the enemy tries to tempt you to talk about somebody or to talk about something or to say something bad, you just go, mm, no, no, shandala, my mama, kasai. I want you, would you just pray in the spirit with me right now? Let's finish out 2021 praying in the Holy Ghost. All over the house, Lord Jesus. If you've never received the Holy Ghost, just throw your hands up and say, fill me, Lord. And Lord God, we pray as you fill people, they just speak in tongues. Hallelujah. It's going to be a Holy Ghost year. It's going to be a year of anointing. You'll need to be filled with the Spirit to walk in what God has for you. Lord God, we give you praise. Oh, Lord, we thank you right now. Hallelujah. We're a Holy Ghost church. We're a word church. Hallelujah to Jesus. Father, we thank you now. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we give you praise. Hallelujah. Pray in tongues over your family. Pray in tongues over your health. Pray in tongues over your finance. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, give no place to the devil. Your words. So what about actions? If you don't have the words, you won't have the actions. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Oh, Lord, we thank you for every victory in 2021. For every tragedy that took place, thank you for bringing us through it. For every sickness, thank you for bringing us through it. Thank you for restoring health, restoring life. Thank you, Lord Jesus. For every financial mishap, for every financial tragedy, Thank you for restoring us, Lord, financially. Hallelujah. Lord, thank you for restoring us mentally. Some people almost lost their mind this year. I'm serious. They almost lost their mind. They struggled mentally and emotionally with everything they saw going. I know people that just couldn't handle seeing what's going on in the world. But listen, God did not give you a spirit of fear but a power, love, and a sound mind. Praise God. Hallelujah. Get in the Word of God and watch it rise up big in you. In Jesus' name, amen. You ready to finish out 2021? A new page, a new era, a new day, new victories. Amen. God loves you and God cares about you. Lord, we thank you now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Is anyone 
you want us to pray for you before we leave today. You want us to pray with you before we leave today. This is what being in church and a part of a church is all about. Supporting and being supportive of one another. 2022 is going to be a powerful year. A lot of things going on in the religious world, in the political world, the spiritual world. A lot of powerful anointing things are going to take place in the church world. Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, God bless you today. And Lord, we say thank you for 2021, and we're on this side of it. Can somebody say amen? amen. You came through it. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you. We came through it, and we're on this side of it. And Lord, we're looking forward to 2022. Praise God. Praise God. Lord, we thank you for the anointing. We give you the praise now in the name of Jesus. God bless you. From our house to yours, we say blessings of the Lord. Next week, we'll be saying Happy New Year with all 10 of your resolutions. <laughs> Amen. God bless you. Amen. God bless you. Live streaming of this broadcast is brought to you by New Life Media. Thank you for tuning in and supporting our ministry. Remember that you can give online at gotnewlife.net, at paypal.me slash gotnewlife, on cash app at dollar sign new life 1721, by texting your amount to 712-355-5522 or by mailing 1211 North 24th Street, Council Bluffs, Iowa. Also, check us out on Facebook at New Life Fellowship Council Bluffs, Iowa, on YouTube at New Life Fellowship Council Bluffs, on Twitter at Got New Life 1211, and on Instagram at Got New Life 1211. Thank you again, and remember, with Jesus, we always win.